Okay friends, so today we have yet another amazing robot and I like to call it the Pike Spy. Now, why do I call it the Pike Spy? Well, it's because here we have a camera module connected to my robot car. So, I, I can control it using a keyboard and wherever it goes, I can see the live stream. So, I can sit in just one room and take a tour of the whole house. Now, this robot has three main features. Number one, the camera through which we can see the live stream. Number two, the ultrasonic sensor which helps the robot not bang into obstacles. And number three, the keyboard controlling so that you can control it by a keyboard. So now let's see it in action. So now let's headlessly connect to our Raspberry Pi. I will be using the Chrome SSH extension for this. And this is my Raspberry Pi's IP address. So I'll just click on it. For more details about how to do a headless connection, you can watch one of my other videos, which has some details about how to do a headless connection. So now I'll just type in the password and the password is not shown for security reasons. So now this has come and I can just run whatever I want. So I'm going to run this program and we will have to type in this URL. So this is http colon slash slash your pi's IP address colon 8081. So this URL will help us look at our pi scam. So now let's navigate the pi spy into different rooms using our keyboard. we need to build our Pi Spy. So here we are using a Raspberry Pi and I am using version 3B+. This Raspberry Pi is being powered by a small power bank kept right under the Raspberry Pi. And here we also have a motor driver and this motor driver's purpose is to drive these two motors which make the car run. And it is connected through four wires to four GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. And also it is powered by a 9 volt battery also kept under the Raspberry Pi. We have to connect the ground of the 9 volt battery and the ground of the Raspberry Pi together. Because if devices do not have common ground, they cannot interface with each other. And lastly, these four wires connect the motor driver to the motor. And then... What else do we need? We also need an ultrasonic sensor. Here I am using model HCSR04. And this one works by sending out a trigger pulse from a trigger pin and waiting for an eco pulse and to an eco pin. So the trigger pin is connected directly to an any GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi. But the eco pin of the ultrasonic sensor is passed through a voltage divider because the ultrasonic sensor is a 5 volt device but Raspberry Pi accepts only 3.3 volt so we will need to lower the voltage. Lastly, we have a camera module over here connected to the Raspberry Pi through the CSI interface. Here we have a small camera connector. It's right next to the HDMI port and you can just connect the camera there through this kind of cable. So now let's look at the code. For our camera, we are using the service called motion. This service will detect motion in the frame 
and we will stream the video at localhost and you can watch this the live stream at the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. The link for setting up the motion service is in the description section. For the key input, we are using the cursors module and we are using the sub process module to call Linux commands. So at the starting, we call the command sudo service motion start and that just starts the motion service and this list of text is called in the terminals. <coughs> Next we have this. So we create a distance sensor and we initialize the motors. Then we also have a few functions to drive the robot. Next we have a function stop robo and that just stops the robot. It, it calls sudo service motion stop. So that's like sudo service motion start, but it's not starting, it stops the motion service. Then we run this line of code, which exits the program. Next, we have a function which turns off all the motors to stop the car. Here we have an actions directory, which has the keys and the respective functions. So here we have which number corresponds to which key and those numbers are written here and these are the function names which each number should call which each key should call actually so then we have a robo brain function which is the main brain of the robot so then we have a next key we make, we make a next key variable called none then we see we have a loop forever so it just loops continuously it has a short delay and then it checks for obstacles if there is an obstacle it stops the car next if the next key variable is none then it gets the character which is pressed if there is any key pressed and then it prints the key otherwise key equal to next key next key key equal to none so if key is not equal to minus one, that means if some key is actually pressed, then it has a very short delay. Next, it gets the key from the actions. And if, if there is an action to be performed, we perform the action. Then we make next key equal to key. And while next key is equal to equal to key, well, that means while both of them are the same, then it gets the character from the key presses and then, then if we do a keyboard interrupt then it just stops the robot with the stop robot function lastly we use the curses dot wrapper function to continuously call this function until the program is stopped so here we have robo -brain. Hope you enjoyed it a lot and see you soon with another video. Bye.